Hi everyone, welcome to today's quick fix. I want to talk to you about drawing with watercolour. So I love to do some pen and ink illustrations with some watercolour washes, but some pens are better than others and we're going to find out why. The pens I'm using today are various ones that I have in my pen pots on my desk. All the details are in the episode notes below. So I'm just going to first draw wiggly lines on the paper. And the first little thing to mention is the type of paper you're using. Now I'm using cold press paper right now and you can see all these pens, they're fine line pens, um, it is causing a little bit of friction and resistance on a textured paper. So if you are drawing really tiny detailed bits and pieces you want to go for either a, a smooth cold pressed or a hot pressed paper which is smooth naturally anyway because you don't want to get a sort of furry pen outline, little bits of dry pen, just if you're looking for a really nice uh, detailed drawing. Now all the pens I'm using are 0.5 size, so they're all the same thickness. Um, and this one here is just a regular sort of ballpoint pen. It's not specifically used for drawing, but I think it's always useful to pop one of those in to the mix. Um, then we've got the Derwent Graphic Line Maker. Then the Tombow Mono Drawing Pen, which is a water-based pigment ink marker. And then the Winsor & Newton Fine Line Pens. And the first test we're going to do is we're going to see whether they can stand up to a bit of watercolour. So we've seen how they go on the paper. And then I'm just going to do some washes over the top. And you can see... The top two are starting to bleed a little bit. The bottom two are holding fast really beautifully because of course when you're painting with pen your choice is either you draw your picture first and then you do a wash over the top or you would paint in your colour first and then draw over the top of it. So we can see here that the DeWent Graphic Line Maker and the likelihood is the regular pens that aren't designed for being art pens aren't going to stand up too well to being painted over. You can see there's a little bit of a bleed, there's quite a strong bleed there, whereas the Tombow and the Winsor & Newton are really fantastic. So look out for in product descriptions whether they are um, far, colour fast, um, whether they're going to be washed over and be able to fix and, and stay in place. We're now going to look at how pen reacts to colour that's already been painted on the page. It goes without saying that the paint should be 100% dry, but what I've done here is I've painted two colours, um, cadmium orange here, in increasing levels of concentration, so nice and dilute, up to so thick that it's really, like, took ages to dry, hence a little bit of a run. Um, there's a lot of pigment there. And then we've got Payne's Grey, and I wanted to choose two colours that contrasted in their general value anyway. So the orange, even when it's still really strong, is a light colour that we should hope the pen would show up on, whereas the Payne's Grey, even in the mid-tone, it's very dark, the pen will struggle to keep up on it. So what I'm going to do is I just want to draw a single line. I don't want to be going over and over because the whole point is this needs to have ease for drawing if you're going to be doing sketching. So let's see. My pen is going on really nicely. Not too much resistance. And then we get to the orange at the end and that felt like it was sort of wading through thicker paint. It definitely struggled to go but it shows up really well. So let's try the Payne's Grey. Showing up really nicely, going over nice and smoothly. Okay, so now really struggling to show up. And also those last two was really um, wading through thick paint. So that would mean there's a chance if you had painted watercolour on that thickly, even in the lighter colours, it will mean when you start doing your drawing that your pen will sort of, the nib will get clogged up with paint and it really won't be a very good result. You'll almost be like etching into the paint. Okay, let's have a go. This is going nicely. You can actually see that when it goes over the paint, 
that layer of paint has kind of smoothed off the paper surface a little bit and it, it runs much more smoothly over the top whereas on the unpainted paper you can see it's just a little bit scratchy but that went really nicely So we've got the same issue where the pen is just not showing up. I mean, I wouldn't expect any of these pens to maybe show up more than the other because they're all black pens. However, it is interesting to see how they cope. So that one is really struggling through and it might be because the nib has a kind of broader, rounder um, end than the previous one that had a slightly more sharper point so it went through a bit more smoothly. And lastly, the Windsor and Newton. I must say the Windsor and Newton does seem to just sail over the colors really, really nicely. And it seems to me that it fares fairly evenly, whether it's on a painted surface or on an unpainted surface. So to sum up, these two pens here, the Dewent Graphic and my general generic pen, I do have the details in the episode notes of this one. These don't like um, having watercolour washed over the top of them. They do okay when being drawn over the top of colour, but both of them suffer a little bit when drawing onto the plain unpainted paper. These two here, the Tombow, and the Windsor and Newton are really fantastic when it comes to being painted over the top of. And they also did really rather well with the painting underneath. However, this nib, the Tombow, struggled a little bit with the textured paper. So for me, when it comes to pens, my winner is the Windsor and Newton for general all round goodness. But the other tips are just to remember to make sure that your paint when painting underneath uh, a pen and ink drawing has got a level of dilution and doesn't go too thick.